Training to or close to failure has been a very popular and contentious topic for a while now. This recent but unpublished study on training to failure has been making rounds on social media, sparking debate and confusion within the fitness community. While the study's headlines suggest that muscle hypertrophy improves as sets are taken closer to failure, it's not quite that simple. Regardless, this has led fitness influencers to either advocate for training to failure as the ultimate pathway to muscle growth or simply dismiss the study completely. Such polarized perspectives overlook the study's central message. Hypertrophy improves as you approach failure during sets. Thus, in my opinion, one of the key takeaways from the study is that training to failure isn't as black and white as people make it out to be. But since the study is still in the works, let's point our attention to a similar study that is already published and peer-reviewed, giving our discussion better validity. First and foremost, this systematic review had a different conclusion when it comes to the influence of proximity to failure on muscle growth. The researchers concluded that there currently is no evidence to support that training to failure is superior to non-failure training. But when we look at the study in detail, that isn't entirely true. First, the study demonstrated that muscle can be effectively stimulated before reaching failure. Thus, there is a sufficient proximity to failure, but it's difficult to discern the proximity to failure that would theoretically maximize muscle hypertrophy. That said, they also found the involuntary slowing of rep speed resulted in greater muscle gains. So here we can extrapolate that training closer to failure does lead to better hypertrophy outcomes. And this brings us to an important part of the discussion. What exactly are the effects of training to failure? Comparing the effects of proximity to failure when using lower loads versus higher loads, the researchers found that training to failure was more important when using lower loads. A good explanation for this is that when lifting heavier, muscle fiber activation is already maximal from the first rep, meaning the whole muscle already experiences sufficient growth stimulus. Light loads, on the other hand, require some fatigue mechanisms to kick in first, which occurs after several reps leading to maximal fiber activation. To put it simply, training close to failure creates more muscle growth stimulus by increasing the number of muscle fibers that experience mechanical tension. The question then becomes, should you always train to failure? Well, not quite. While training close to failure increases muscle fiber recruitment and mechanical tension, always training to failure could lead to unwanted fatigue and muscle damage. First, this unwanted fatigue may decrease motor unit recruitment, force production, and thus lead to diminished gains overall. Also, muscle damage is high towards the final repetitions of a set taken to failure compared to stopping just short of failure. You see, post-exercise muscle damage redirects some of the elevated muscle protein synthesis rates away from fostering muscle growth and toward repairing damage incurred during exercise instead. So, what does training to failure achieve? 1. The closer you are to failure, the higher the muscle fiber recruitment. 2. The closer you are to failure, the more mechanical tension is produced. 3. Exposing the largest number of muscle fibers you can to mechanical tension leads to the greatest rates of muscle growth. But there are potential consequences to training to absolute failure too often. For starters, fatigue accumulates and is greater in the final reps of a set, leading to significantly reduced growth stimulus as your workout progresses. Second, the final reps of a set to failure could produce so much muscle damage that they result in a net zero effect on hypertrophy. These two also likely explain the non-linear relationship seen in most studies that analyze the relationship between training proximity to failure and muscle size gains. In summary, while training closer to failure seems to produce better hypertrophy outcomes, you have to keep in mind the diminishing returns and stopping a few reps shy of failure allows you to manage that. And according to this study, stopping one to two reps before failure seems to be the sweet spot. Did you find this video helpful? If so, 
click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you want to keep optimizing your training, watch our video on progressive overload. There, you'll learn the best way to progressively overload your training so that you can keep getting bigger and stronger while avoiding plateaus. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.